Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul connecting with you today, Thursday. It is the 22nd of March, 2018. And I'm very happy to be connecting with you today. We have a special subject matter today. I hope all of you will enjoy it. It's on the nature, power, and significance of chakras. So for any of you that have wanted a bit more depth of information than typical topical stuff that is out there, I think you'll enjoy today's live stream. This uh, <coughs> uh, yesterday, if you missed that, it was a good one. It was a general topic on you know, how to reverse some major sufferings that might be happening in our life. So uh, most of us have one or two major suffering areas in our life, and we would like to be able to make a difference uh, and see that shift. Obviously, it takes a little bit more than a one-time effort, but I discussed that. So if you missed that, then please go to my Facebook page, um, uh, and if you're not a friend, then do, you know, friend me, of course, and then also subscribe and you'll know when I go live, but that will allow you to uh, go back onto my page and see yesterday's live stream, <coughs> excuse me, if you missed that. So, um, that was actually, uh, very well received. Today, I'm going to be focusing on the power, nature, and significance of chakras. And, um, for a lot of people, there is a lot of valuable information. There is some misinformation out there about that. Uh, fortunately, not too much, but some. And uh, I will go into a little more depth today. <clears throat> For those that show a lot of interest and would like to know more, uh, I would say in approximately a month, uh, well, maybe a little bit longer than that, it's going to be about another month and a half, maybe two months, I will be starting another program. I'm right in the middle of a 12-week program for Awakening Spiritual Channels in which I cover uh, the chakras individually in great detail, including the major energy centers of the heart message center, the third eye, uh, and other uh, spiritual centers related to awakening your spiritual channels. But included in those is actually the seven chakras. I'm gonna talk a little bit in general today. <clears throat> then if you're one of those folks that would like to have some specifics, then I do recommend in approximately a month and a half or so, maybe two months when I restart up the next program for awakening the spiritual channels and you can join that. And so let's uh, check in with who's joining us so far here today. <clears throat> Welcome Sam Swainen. Welcome Jennifer Cress Smith. Aloha to uh, Magdalena Blatchford. Aloha. Welcome Janice. Catherine O'Shea. She's a local Hawaii girl. Welcome Vanessa. Welcome also Jeff Christians, Jess Christensen. And uh, Lois Ring Stout. Thank you for coming Lois. Welcome also to Kristen Rojas. Uh, keep an eye on Kristen Rojas' post. She is my right hand. She assists me with posting the things that I talk about so you can access the links. <clears throat> Welcome also to NNC and Tammy Hunter. Aloha, Donna. Um, Nicole. Welcome, Nicole. Welcome also to uh, Claudia and Maria Crispy. Aloha to, uh, to Jamie Jemima. Jemima. Hope I said that right. Chadwick and uh, Vanessa. Welcome, Victor Robin. Welcome also to uh, Gerald Aravalo and Maria Joy. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for uh, your presence. Thank you for clicking on the share button to let other people know about this. <clears throat> and uh, it seems that Kristen is having some difficulty sharing, and she's the one that supports me to do that. So I would appreciate if you also share, let other people know about today. I have a feeling the subject matter of chakras is gonna be pretty popular depending on where and what, um, what pages it lands on and what groups it lands on. So somebody's tuning in from Berlin. That's a long way away and it's about uh, one o'clock in the morning over there, at least for another week. Um, they're gonna go through a, a shift also and they'll be exactly 12 hours opposite of me. So. Welcome to the Night Owls, Missy Dodd, welcome, welcome also Danta, and welcome also to Lali Singh, coming in from India, where it's quite early over there. <clears throat> so thank you all for joining. So while we wait for Facebook to grab some more souls, let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. As I always do on my live streams, we invite in all the beings of light and we chant the mantra of love, peace and harmony. So why don't you join me? Let's place our hands in soul light, soul service hand position, which is like a prayer position. We drop the left hand in front of the heart center. The right hand remains pointed towards heaven. And I'll invite in the beings of light. Dear my beloved, our beloved divine creator, 
all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, all of heaven's generals and soldiers, heaven's animals, to the soul of all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, kahunas, all Buddhas and bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, our individual heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints, the, dear the soul of beloved Mother Earth, the sun and the moon, and the soul of all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, all serving the plan of the light side. <clears throat> we love you, we honor you, respect you, deeply, deeply appreciate you, and ask in whatever way is appropriate for your presence and blessings here today. Please guide this wisdom and teachings on the subject of the power and significance of chakras. Please guide each and every one of us to further develop and open our chakras and release blockages as appropriate as we move through these teachings. I wish to offer my deepest gratitude to my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah, for bringing this wisdom that I am sharing with you today. We ask the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes to please turn on. <clears throat> and we invite all souls in all universes to please come to join with us, to chant with us the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. So for those that are new, this source soul song uh, can be downloaded at lovepeaceharmony.org. Kristen Rojas will post that link for you. And it is translated in over 40 languages and it is recommended and asked of you to share it with as many people as possible, including the links to download it, so that more and more people can share and chant this mantra that brings together humanity. So let us chant together. Let us serve together. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, 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 Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula. Wo-ai-wo-shin-ha-ling-wo-ai-tran-ran-ling-ang-li-ing-rung-ha-ma-shir-shang-shong-ai-ping-ang-ha-shin I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. For those that are new, how is a Mandarin Chinese word that means complete, perfect, uh, perfect health. It has many subtle meanings. And we say thank you three times. The first thank you is to our beloved divine creator. The second thank you is to all the beings of light who have come to serve us in this hour. And the third thank you is to our own soul. So this is why we say how, 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 thank you. Thank you, thank you. So thank you all for joining. Uh, and if you'd help out Kristen, she normally can share pretty easily. She's getting blocked. So any sharing you do would be gratefully appreciated. <clears throat> so welcome also to, uh, to Lolly Singh. Welcome Kathy Arnold. Welcome Seema AJ. And welcome also to, uh, oh, you're in San Francisco. Lolly's in San Francisco. Okay, great. Uh, welcome to Richie Souther and Crane. Welcome also to Angie Taylor. Um, and aloha and welcome to Richie, uh, to Agot, welcome Tatiana, welcome Cheryl, and welcome also to uh, Larissa Angeli Flauta, welcome also to Kristen Strachan and CJ, aloha to Pat and Janine, welcome also to um, any other souls that I might have missed. Thank you all for joining, thank you for clicking on the share button. So let me get a drink of water here before we get started. <clears throat> and aloha to Don Robinson. And if you are here and I didn't see your name, sometimes Facebook 
does that. They show who pops in. Sometimes I only see your name if you make a comment. <coughs> well, thank you for uh, posting that, Kristen. I appreciate that. So today, uh, when I tuned in this morning, I said, okay, Heaven, what do you want me to talk about? I said, we want you to share more about the chakras with people. Now, it's curious because I've, I've done a lot of teachings on chakras, so I'm going to actually do a flow right now and find out why Heaven wanted me to talk about the chakras. And then I'll go into the teaching itself because I'm kind of curious as to why they told me to teach on that today. Uh, and thank you, Nicole, for inviting Shazzy. Welcome also to Debbie Davenport. So I'm going to do what's called a flow, which is basically a message from heaven borrowing my mouth. And the question is on why they asked me to teach today on the chakras. So please enjoy. This information can best be received with your eyes closed. To the soul of my beloved heaven's team, guides, angels, and saints, the soul of those in charge of these live streams, and those who came to offer me the guidance today to offer the wisdom and teachings on chakras. I love you and I respect you. I bow down to you. Can you please bow my mouth and, and share with all of us, including me, why you ask for this uh, information to be shared here today? Thank you. <clears throat> hey, uh, hey, oh. hey, uh, hey, uh. How? This is the divine, my beloved children. I love each and every one of you with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my energy, all of my matter. There is not one ounce, one speck, or one part of you that I do not love fully, completely, and unconditionally. I love all of your negative thoughts, all of your fears, all of your worries. I love you no matter what you think, do, or say. I love you no matter what you have thought in the past, said, or done. There is literally nothing that you could or have done that would limit the amount of unconditional love that I have for each of you, my children. Please remember this in every moment, especially the ones in which you are not loving yourself. For this is self-created, karmic created, if you will. The question has been asked today, why would, should the wisdom be offered on the power, significance, and nature of chakras? The reason I asked my son, Paul, today to touch on this subject was because it is relevant and pertinent to each of you in the realignment of you to your soul. For many of you, you think that you are this personality you have developed in this lifetime. But in fact, this is but a very small facet of a very large diamond that is your soul. Imagine a diamond with many hundreds of facets. Each facet represents a personality or a lifetime in which you have experienced. Each of your experiences are for exactly that experience. They are not judged, they are not criticized, and certainly they are not uh, minimized in their uh, perfection. This is why a diamond is considered perfect when it is cut into many carrots. For in the cutting of each facet of each diamond, your soul, you are becoming more and more of the perfection from which you have come. So this is why I always see you with the clarity and purity of that which you have come from, my heart. The chakras act as a medium through which my frequencies, my love, my service, my healing, my blessings can come to each of you. When your chakras are blocked by karmic conditions, by emotional blockages, relationship pain, suffering, uh, mental blockages, and so much more, 
then they, in essence, act as a in inhibit inhibitory filter through which my blessings, frequencies, and love are stymied and inhibited. The reason these blockages are there is because of the previous lifetimes in which you as a different personality had unique and different experiences. Many of those experiences were not of love and light, and those in essence act as a karmic blockage in your current present personality life. So in this current present personality life in which you have a vested interest as if it was the 100% of who you actually are, I have come to remind you that by the opening of the chakras and by the practices of awakening and clearing these blockages, you can then see all of the facets of the true purpose of why you are here, of the trueness of your soul. You can receive the higher wisdoms, guidances, blessings, healings, and so much more when you take the time to clear the blockages in these very key energy point areas of your body. You will come to learn through this communication today the nature of each of the chakras in a minimal sense and the power and significance of specific practices to keep them clear. I hope this gives you enough of a significance of understanding of why I have asked Master Paul to reveal this information to you today. Enjoy the show. It should serve you well. Know that I am in you, with you, around you, and part of all of your lives, unequivocally and incomprehensibly, with the greatest of unconditional love. This is your divine. How, how, how. Let us bow our head nine times to our beloved divine. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that beautiful message. And now I know why I was asked to do this today. So thank you, Divine. So welcome also to uh, Patricia Laudemir. Welcome to Candy Cornette. Welcome, Dinah Victoria. Welcome, Lisa Zarniak. And welcome also to uh, Medicina uh, Vaca Camina. Hopefully I said that right. Welcome, Donna Bawana. Welcome, Pan Gerg. And anybody else I missed, welcome. Thank you for coming. And thank you for clicking on the share button. So. For those that just came in midstream, that was called a flow. Uh, that was a message from the divine to serve you uh, as to the purpose, power, and significance of today's teaching on chakras. So let's delve into it, shall we? So I have learned the vast majority of this information through Master Shah. Master Shah is my spiritual teacher and father. This is a picture of Master Shah for those that do not know. Um, he is a world-renowned healer, master teacher. He has doctorate degrees in, in uh, Eastern and Western medicine. He's written over 20 books, uh, 11 of which are New York Times bestsellers. So if you don't know who he is, go do some homework. I'll be sharing some of that wisdom with you today from him. Pick up my calligraphy cards that just fell. I have to honor them. They're very special. Okay. So... Uh, you can learn more uh, specific information, some of the information I'll be sharing with you from a book called Dao Song Dao Dance. Keep an eye on Kristen Rojas' posts. She'll post that information for you, how to get that book. Or audiobook is really good too. And uh, so I'll be sharing snippets of that. So there are known to us in humanity commonplace knowledge, Dao Song, excuse me, commonplace knowledge, the seven chakras. There may be eight, nine, ten. Some people talk about that. Uh, I'm not saying there's not. I'm saying that I haven't been taught on those. I'm only going to share what I have been taught on. So there is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh chakras. In the wisdom and teachings of Master Shah, he refers to them as soul houses. Soul houses. Now, the first time I heard that um, about 10 years ago, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Why would he refer to them as something different than all the yogi masters and all the teachings of the Far East? Because he grew up in the Far East and he certainly knew of chakras. So why did he change the name? 
And this is what he was taught by the divine through the wisdom and teachings that have made 11 of his book, books New York Times bestsellers. He is a divine vehicle and channel that brings the highest levels of wisdom to humanity for this awakening time when humanity is going through a mass and huge awakening. And they're referred to as soul houses because the soul moves through the body on its way to higher and higher layers of enlightenment. The first layer of enlightenment is called soul enlightenment in which the soul over the course of many, many lifetimes, many, many lifetimes, does many positive and beneficial things to serve not themselves, but in essence to be an unconditional servant, to align their soul to the Creator, which is through selflessness versus selfishness. And according to the wisdom that Master Shah has brought, when he checked with God, he says, well, how many lifetimes does it take for a person to reach soul enlightenment in which their soul sits in their heart center, in their message center, what is commonly referred to as the fourth chakra? And what he heard was it takes between 300 and 500 exceptional lifetimes. What does that mean? That means that you are like a monk, uh, sitting on a mountaintop chanting to serve humanity uh, six hours a day for 60 years. That's one lifetime. Six hours a day, six years. That's one lifetime. Heaven told Master Shah it would take approximately three to five hundred lifetimes of that level of service to have your heart, your soul sit in your message center. So the reason it's referred to as soul houses instead of chakras is because of the um, the soul progressing on its journey. It's a measurement, if you will, of where the soul is on its path to enlightenment. There are other layers of enlightenment which I'm not going to go into now, including mind enlightenment and heart enlightenment and uh, um, body enlightenment. <clears throat> so these levels and layers of soul uh, houses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is how I'm going to refer to them now. Um, because that's in alignment with the wisdom that Master Shah has brought. What is the first soul house and its power and significance? Well, first of all, it's located in the base of your torso, just above your perineum. So if you squeeze your anus, that's about where the first soul house is, just inside the skin there. And it's a fist-sized energy center, so if you hold your fist up, you'll see how big it is. It's extremely important. It's actually called the Hui Di Lun, which is a Mandarin Chinese translation. It translates to the gear at the bottom of the sea. And the Hui Di Lun, or the gear at the bottom of the sea, is exceedingly important for the other six gears, if you will, the other six uh, soul houses, because it turns, and when it turns, it turns the others. Your, our chakras, our soul houses, are energy centers. They cannot be seen by modern science at this point, but they absolutely exist. And they're, again, pretty big. The density of our soul houses depends upon the amount of, of uh, uh, practice and focus that we use to invoke and boost them which in essence is clearing the blockages as we clear the blockages and they become much more potent in their frequency and what they can do to service so the first soul house has many different aspects that impact us physically that impacts us emotionally and even uh, on some levels mentally of course spiritually physically uh, it has a physical association in the body to the genitals to the sexual organs, to the bladder, and to the lower aspects and areas of the spine. So uh, there are those that have uh, ongoing bladder infections and or um, sexual uh, organ dysfunction on some level, whether it's a disease or simply a dysfunction. Um, there are those that have significant hemorrhoids issues. Uh, there are those that have blockages with in the lower part of the body. And so on the physical level, when we have a strong first soul house, a, a strong first chakra, by doing the practices that are recommended in the Tao Song Tao Dance book, then, uh, because you don't hear about this, guys, most people, they know of chakras, but they're clueless in their entirety of practices to boost these areas. This is why I keep referring back to that book. I'm not trying to sell the books. You can pick them up for a couple of bucks from the use section of Amazon. So it's not about selling them. It's about empowering you with the wisdom, okay? Dao Song Dao Dance. Look it up. Um, and if you get the audiobook version, which is pretty cool, I recommend getting both, you can actually hear Master Shah's voice walking you through the practices and leading you through the mantras, which is, you know, priceless. So uh, it comes with a DVD in the back 
uh, CD DVD which walks you through the location and the, and the mantras. Additionally, the first soul house, or first chakra, uh, impacts us emotionally. There is an association, uh, emotional mental association, to finances and to addictions and to relationships. So these all have associations with the first soul house. Um, so a lot of times we, we keep relationship blockages in our heart center and our third soul house and our first soul house. Um, these relationship blockages can impact us down there because of the, the sexual orientation nature of the proximity of the first soul house to our sexual organs. And so when we uh, are cut off in a relationship or we have uh, a lot of drama or trauma in relationships, it impacts our, our um, organs, our sexual organs, and, and that puts a negative uh, energy into our first soul house. Whereas in reverse, if you empower your first soul house, there are some people that haven't had um, um, the word orgasm, and I'm not going down the sexual road, but there are people that haven't had that on the female sector for a long, 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 long time. And there are men that have trouble um, with their erections. This, again, is related to first soul house blockages on the energetic level. And so those that do a lot of empowerment there or receive blessings for that area, they have had, I've, I've talked to many people who have had uh, instant shift down in that area, most of them women. The men, of course, need a lot more practice but these are some understandings of the nature of the first uh, soul house and the empowerment of this area. Okay. Also, addictions have an association with this area. Uh, those who have um, alcoholic addiction, drug addiction, sexual addictions, these are all blockages in the first soul house, of course, the heart chakra as well. So that's uh, what I can share with you in a simplified version, very simplified version of first soul house. Second soul house, where is it located at? Uh, if you touch your belly button and go down approximately an inch and a half and go inside the center of your body, this is approximately where the second soul house is, what you would know as the second chakra. Welcome Lucy Todd, welcome Jim, welcome also to Yvonne Spear, uh, welcome also to, um, who else, I saw some other new names popping in here, Ilona, welcome Ronaldo, welcome also to... Um, Harriet Boone, and I think I probably missed a few names. Forgive me if I did, but welcome. Thank you for coming. So each of the soul houses, with the exception of the third eye, is a fist-sized energy center, and each of them can have a different um, uh, density in them, depending on the amount of karmic blockages, depending on the amount of practice done to empower them. So the second soul house is commonly known as the lower Don Tien. And uh, most of you, uh, show of hands, how many of you, show me your happy faces, whatever, are familiar with Tai Chi, Qi Gong, right? What do they do? They place their palms over the lower abdomen and they move their body in circular fashion. And they go, ooh, like this. But if you follow the teachings of those masters, their intention, their focus is in the lower abdomen. It's also referred to as the uh, lower dantian or the second chakra, Master Shah's teaching, second soul house. So why? Why? Okay, did you know there are entire hospitals in China? An entire hospital that all they do is qigong and tai chi. That's it. Movement of qi energy with the base in the zhong or the core area of their body. Okay, So obviously the second soul house is very pertinent to many areas of the body, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Energetically speaking, what is it doing? When you empower the lower uh, Don Tian or the second soul house, you are in fact empowering everything that's in the lower cavity of the body down there, which includes the small intestine, uh, and on the back side of your body, there is the kundalini area back in there, although it's not a chakra, it is positively empowered in this area. There are other, quite a few other uh, energy centers that are sacred and secret energy centers in the lower part of the body. It impacts the colon, it impacts um, the bladder, the upper part of the bladder, and it impacts also, uh, it stretches into the areas of the um, organs that, that both second and third touch on things, for example, the stomach, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the liver, uh, a little bit of the kidney, mostly that's third chakra. Um, so these are areas that are positively impacted. Constipation is, uh, many associations to constipation, but one of the associations is 
low energy in the second soul house. Master Shah has had students ask him, what do I do? He said, chant. Jo, 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 Jo. If you've taken my classes or Master Shah's classes, you know this as a sound power where you close your eyes, you visualize, you apply the four powers uh, and bringing in uh, frequency into this area while chanting Jo, Jo, Jo. And Jo is a mantra or a sound power that woo, 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 vibrates this area. So energetically speaking, it impacts the physical parts of the body as indicated. Um, what in essence it's doing is, as with all of the chanting and mantra, is it's vibrating the larger and smaller cellular matter. The energy and matter, remember we're only 1% matter, 99% chi, space. Okay, And so that energy and matter needs to be in relative balance for there to be flow of the chi between the spaces. Why is there entire hospitals in China that have a very high level of success reversing irreversible illnesses? Very high. Compared to cancer in America, which is a 4% cure rate, they have well over 25% using qigong. Why? They're moving the chi through the body. The chakras are significant. For those that came in after I did the flow, I just did a flow. Uh, I asked Kevin, please explain why, why I am been asked to teach today on the power and significant and nature of the chakras. And uh, Heaven borrowed my mouth and I spoke for about five minutes on why. If you miss that, go back. It, it ties into what I'm sharing with you now. It's about moving the blockages from the body so that we can receive all the blessings that Heaven has for us. So that we can receive the messages and we can receive the healing that we have been asking for. This is why we need to clear the chakra blockages. So welcome Three Santon, welcome Julia Moffat, um, and everyone else who if I missed your name, forgive me. Third soul house. Where is it located? Uh, I actually thought it was in a different location than what everyone else says it is in. If you if you pull up any pictures on the third chakra, it will point it to be uh, in the upper part of the abdomen above the uh, belly button. That's where most of the people uh, have, have said that it's at. That's where a lot of the teachings state that it's at. But I'm going to go with what my teacher has said since I've witnessed Oh, about a thousand miracles and have done the practices and have opened all of my spiritual channels to a degree where there's a lot more to go but basically I've done enough wisdom and teachings with him where I 100% trust what he shares and with his third eye which is extraordinary powerful he says no the third third chakra is actually directly behind the belly button not above it where a lot of other um, uh, information depicts it to be so directly behind the belly button, uh, somewhere in the middle of your body, and his teachings he would say about two and a half inches inside the body. But if you're a relatively large person, that's not where your third soul house is going to be. It's not going to be two and a half inches inside that belly if you're a large person. It's going to be in the center of your body. Okay. Um, third soul house, exceedingly important to our health and wellness. Very, very important. Look at how many organs are in our body. Okay, we have the liver, we have the spleen, we have the stomach, we have the pancreas, we have the large intestine and the small intestine, the upper parts of it. We have the kidneys. We have uh, a large area of the lymph and lymph nodes are in this area. Okay, the entire diaphragm is a massive space in this area. This is called this whole area is called the middle jowl, which is a massive space. Remember, 99% of things are space. Even with all these organs in there, they still only represent 1% of the matter of our body. There's still 99%. And that 99% can have a significant amount of blockages. Now, I'm going to divert a little bit here and come back around in a full circle. I did not understand much about karma until I started training with Master Shah. I thought karma was whole body and we're done. Okay, clear the whole body. Good to go, right? Uh-uh. What if you were an ancestor back in the knives and swords days, impaled somebody on their uh, liver? You know, you're in war, you're just doing what you were told to do, right? That means you have karma on the liver, guys. You took somebody's life, okay? Maybe an ancestor did, it doesn't matter. What if with our, you know, handy blades and knives and little balls with the spikes on them, we whack somebody in the head, okay? We could have brain karma, okay? We could have strokes, we could have seizures, we could have some significant learning difficulties. This is brain karma. So what I came to understand is karma is not a generalized thing. And Master Shah's wisdom and teachings, which is source wisdom and teaching, karma can reside in specific areas of the body 
within the spaces, within the chakras, and within the organs. Interesting, right? So when we deal with the chakras individually, we're dealing with the space of the body, okay? And the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us, he says that there are three karmas that are the most important to clear, if at all possible, if you ever have the opportunity to get them cleared. First one is personal karma, the karma you personally created. Second one is all the ancestral karma. You know, we don't complain when they do good things because we have a good life, an easy, fun life, right? Probably wouldn't be watching if you're one of those people who have an easy, fun life. You're probably here because life sucks and you're trying to figure out how to make it better. Uh, so that means that we and our ancestors have done some unpleasant things because we probably, you probably wouldn't be here if life was all good and hunky-dory. You'd be out spending money on some Caribbean boat somewhere and having a good time, thinking life was just wonderful. And so we, you, I, and our ancestors have made some mistakes. These mistakes follow us on the soul journey from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. Personal karma, ancestral karma, the third karma that Master Shah states is the most important to deal with is chakra, okay? Clear the chakras of their karma. Why? He went on to explain why. Um, because they are in the spaces. When was the last time you cut open a body or saw, saw some doctor show where they're cutting open a body and you saw chakras? You know, these seven golden balls in your body, right? Nobody sees those, but they're there. And they represent the 99% of the space that carries a huge chunk of the spiritual debt that follows our soul from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. So when we do the practices for the soul houses, for the chakras, when we do the practices, what are we doing? We are little by little by little clearing the spaces. When you clear the spaces, what are you doing? You are making more room for the chi to flow which then helps your, your abdomen to feel better. It takes care of the constipation issues. Your, your urinary bladder infections start to minimize or go away. Your liver becomes stronger. Your energy becomes stronger. Your kidneys become stronger and so forth. Okay? It's all about clearing the blockages little by little by little by doing the practices. But you have to first have the intelligence and the wisdom to understand why you need to do the practices, which is where we're at now. Okay? Moving on to the fourth soul house, fourth chakra. Everybody knows about this one, the heart center, the heart chakra, okay? Well, a lot of people don't really comprehend the depth and power and significance of this chakra, what Master Shah refers to in his teaching as the message center or fourth soul house. Message center, uh, why does he call it that? Because it is the center through which we receive heaven's messages. It is the center by which we uh, can deal with a lot of our blockages or be stuck in a lot of our blockages. We have relationship pain, relationship suffering. Where do you think it blocks? Ta-da! Heart chakra. Okay? So then we close our heart. We can't really open it up. We don't trust people. All of those things, right? We're mean. We can't figure out why nobody comes to us, why we can't find our true love, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Heart chakra blockages. Very, very important. Also, this impacts our physical heart, it impacts our lungs, and it impacts everything from here down to our uh, upper part of our um, middle cavity. So the heart chakra is and referred to as our karma center, our relationship center. It's referred to as our emotional center, okay? Although the individual major emotions have specific uh, uh, elements and organs associated with them, I'm not gonna do a teaching on that now, um, when we are balanced in our heart center, our message center, we can positively impact our other organs. Uh, for example, the heart center is known as the fire element, and it can help balance the water element, which is the kidney zone. And so fire and water, when they're in balance, we sleep well, our, we're balanced in our energies, we're not overly angry or overly fearful, okay? These are associated uh, with some of the internal workings of the body. When we boost the power to each of the seven chakras, you like how I did that thunk, 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 thunk? When we do that, what are we doing? We're clearing the blockages of the energetic channel through which heaven and mother earth and all the beings of light are constantly sharing their light with us. 
We are constantly being bombarded by heaven's light, heaven's love, but we just can't feel it. We can't see it. We just are stuck in the mud because we don't have this wisdom and we don't practice the practices of this wisdom. All right. <clears throat> fifth soul house, fifth chakra in the throat. Again, fist sized energy center. It has direct associated relations to um, confidence. Okay, confidence. Um, the ability to go do something that you set your mind on, right? Willpower, direct association to fifth soul house. Also, uh, some of you have trouble stating what you think, right? You hide behind your thoughts. You just keep them inside. Maybe you keep inside your anger, right? That affects your liver. Uh, or you keep inside your fears. You don't say anything about them. Fears affect your kidneys. So when we don't speak, it impacts our fifth soul house. The fifth soul house connects with communication between heaven and our heart. So heaven gives us a message, it comes in, and then it goes, it, 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 it can't come through this fifth soul house blockage because we don't speak our truth. We don't, um, we don't, uh, uh, or some of, us, some of us in reverse. We speak our truth far too much. We're happy to share our opinions with everybody because we are right. We have a massive ego, right? So those people also could have significant blockages here because they create karma by sharing the truth, their truth that may not be true, but they're more than happy to share it because it supports their ego. And then it possibly takes other people down inappropriate paths or, or steers them to have negative mindsets, attitudes, or beliefs that they would not otherwise have because of that person with the ego. So you see it works both ways. We can have blockages in this zone and it could create thyroid imbalances because where's the thyroid? Right here. What does the thyroid control? It controls many of the T1, 2, 3, and 4 cells uh, which help control the movement of our hormones and our hormones control what? Emotions. So those of you that have emotional swings this way or this way, um, they might call you bipolar. It could be a thyroid imbalance, but it has a karmic association. Okay. So this area is exceedingly important in so many ways. Very, very important. Sixth soul house, also referred to as sixth chakra, uh, third eye. Some people refer to it as third eye. Very rarely actually people refer to it as sixth chakra, sixth soul house. They love the third eye. Okay. Where's it located at? It's in the center of your brain. Uh, and it's about cherry sized and it's bigger actually than your pineal gland, which is what a lot of people know to be associated with the third soul house. So if we have karma in the third eye, then it actually could create problems for the pineal gland. If you're one of those people that just love drinking water with fluoride in it, then definitely you're going to have problems with the pineal gland because fluoride, uh, uh, encrustates the pineal gland and restricts it from its, uh, function. Uh, the pineal gland is, has a lot of associations with hormonal release and balances of our serotonin and our um, uh, melatonin. Uh, serotonin has associations with our mood, like depression, right? So when we have too much fluoride, we can easily become depressed. When we have blockages in our pineal gland, which could be because of karma in the sixth soul house, then it, it could create literally a pressure. Uh, making the malfunctioning of the pineal gland, which can create less serotonin, which can create less uh, um, happiness or more depressive conditions. Interesting, right? Also melatonin. Melatonin associates our sleep cycles. Okay. And so if we have an imbalance with the six soul house, it can impact our sleep cycles as well. So now you discover two areas, three areas actually that can imbalance your sleep cycles. The fire and water, which is related to the fourth soul house, fourth chakra, heart and the kidneys. Okay. And melatonin imbalance in the sixth soul house. All of them, when you clear blockages consistently every day in the chakra system, then you're clearing blockages in the space, which allows uh, light, heaven's light, mother earth's light, all the holy beings light to come in clearing the blockages incrementally day by day by day and you can start you know, opening your third eye a little bit more. The depression conditions wane off a little bit. Um, these are some common sense comprehensions of the power and significance of why we need to do the practices each day 
for these soul houses. It's becoming very clear to me that I'm not going to be able to finish this live stream uh, <laughs> in one teaching. I'm going to have to save the practices for Monday. Um, <clears throat> seventh soul house, seventh chakra. Uh, it is known as the crown chakra in a variety of teachings. Uh, it also is, there's a point on top of your head. Everybody touch the tip of your ear, okay? Imagine a line from the middle of your nose straight back. Draw a line from the tip of your ear straight back. And that dip in your head there, that point on top of your head, is the top dead center. That's where the crown chakra resides. Some people, including myself, had a misperception that the crown chakra was inside the body. It's not. It sits above the top of your head. Okay? And the top uh, uh, of your, um, up here, the crown chakra, the seventh soul house, is related to enlightenment. And Master Shah's wisdom and teachings, and I saw somebody make a comment of the wisdom. Please know, not my wisdom. I am regurgitating the wisdom from Master Shah. One of the wisest men on the planet for spiritual growth. Go do your homework. Master Shah. D-R-S-H-A dot com. Go pick up any of his books. Seventh Soul House. Crown Chakra. Okay. Um, because it resides above the top of the body, it has associations with enlightenment. Many people want to reach enlightenment, have no clue how to get there. I was certainly in that category. Uh, even after training under two masters, zero clue, no good teachings on how to reach enlightenment until I came across Master Shaw's wisdom 10 years ago. Thank God heaven brought somebody to the planet that has wisdom and is willing to share it, which is why I love this man. He doesn't hold it back for one or two people like the masters in the deep mountains. Um, he shares it willingly and it's such a beautiful thing. And so very relevant and important to brain health as is the sixth soul house, sixth chakra. And also very important for our memory. This is what a lot of people do not understand. The six, or excuse me, the crown chakra has a lot of association to our memory. Think about it. How wise is our soul? How many lifetimes does our soul has? Your soul very likely was a musician in one lifetime, a politician in another lifetime, a teacher of mathematics in another lifetime, a housewife in another lifetime, a mother a hundred times, a father a thousand times, who knows, right? But I can guarantee you, your soul has oodles and gobs of wisdom, lots and lots and lots of wisdom. But we muddle through life suffering because we're trying to figure stuff out and we get our, the, the you know, we just get beat up left and right. And the wisdom that Master Shah has brought to us is, Stop it! Wake up! Here's the teachings. Do the practices. Clear the karmic blockages. Do your forgiveness practices. Chant the mantras. Serve others. Chant love, peace, and harmony. Clear, clear, clear. Be consistent every day, every day, every day. And little by little, the darkness leaves. Little by little, the darkness leaves. Pretty soon, you can actually improve your health. Pretty soon, the addictions are gone. Pretty soon, you found true love again. Pretty soon, the finances are better. Pretty soon, you're hearing heaven's messages that have been coming at you 360 degrees 100% of the time. They're never not coming to you, okay? And finally, you're starting to hear them because you're clearing your channels. The channel between the base chakra and the crown chakra seven soul houses there's a channel that runs between heaven and mother earth is loaded with blessings loaded with healing loaded with wisdom and your soul is trying desperately to communicate with you all of the wisdom that it has so when we open the crown chakra we are aligning to our soul's wisdom and it saves us tons of suffering who wants to save tons of suffering right of course who wouldn't want to do that so this is the importance, power, and significance of the seven soul houses. I haven't even gotten to the channel that runs down the back of the spine, okay? 
It is extremely important to do these practices. Uh, there, is, is, there is mantra, okay? The four powers. Uh, incorporate the mantras for each of the soul houses. Incorporate the mantra for uh, moving the chi the, the through our body in a circle. Both directions, not just one direction. But this is wisdom for next week. Just too much to tune in on one, uh, one live stream. Hey, Phil, I saw you show up. I hope you got to see the whole thing. I love Phil. He's a, Phil is an old roommate of mine from back when I was a, a, a young and stupid teenager. And uh, uh, I got to run into Phil like 30 years later. And uh, he probably doesn't even recognize me now. But he's a good guy. So um, watch this again, especially if you came in in the latter half. Okay, you missed all kinds of good, good, good stuff. I will return on Monday. I'm going to do a chant and serve you. Don't run away yet. I'm going to give you a blessing. Uh, but I will return on Monday and I will teach you the, the mantra that you can chant to uh, move this chi through all seven soul houses. I'm going to serve you now with that mantra, uh, but you will learn how to chant for each soul house and use that mantra. And uh, go get the book, Tao Song, Tao Dance, T-A-O. That's how you spell Tao. Go get it. Get the audio book and the book. Spend the money on both. Trust me, you'll, you'll be appreciative if you did it on both. Um, and key. Remember yesterday I gave you the same key wisdom. It still applies. Be consistent. Okay, if life sucks, if you're suffering in whatever area of your life and you want to clear it, then that means you got to do practice more than one day, guys. You got to be realistic. Okay, karma is not one day karma. Karma follows us. Okay, the good stuff follows us, makes us happy in life. The bad stuff follows us, makes our life suck. You want to clear the bad stuff? It didn't come yesterday. Okay, it came over a series of lifetimes. That means you need to do practice consistently. Okay. So hopefully that part's pretty clear for you. Uh, so now I'm going to offer you a blessing. This blessing will be to move the chi through your body. I'll give you a little forewarning. Um, for some of you, it might move chi, which is great, okay? And some of you might be feeling fine and end up with a little headache at the end. Some of you might have a headache and be feeling fine at the end, okay? Why? Because Chi is much like moving a uh, rust. You know how like you had a pipe, you know, like a long metal pipe, and you, you knock on that pipe and then the rust and the calcium falls off and then it's floating in the water, right? Well, when you push the water down that pipe, that rust and that calcium debris builds up and can create a blockage. So when you move Chi through the body, through Qigong, through Tai Chi, or through the mantra I'm going to do right now and that you'll learn on Monday, then the possibility of what I just explained is there. Okay, so what do you do about that? You keep chanting. Okay, when I'm done, you go back and you keep listening to me chant until that blockage blows through. Just like power will push through uh, any crud that builds up at the end, it'll just blow through. All right, so prepare to receive. Everybody sit up straight, bring your back away from the back of the chair. Relax your palms, one over the other, on your lower abdomen. Bring your thoughts, your mind, and your breath into your lower abdomen. Keep your thoughts, your mind, and your breath in your lower abdomen. See golden light coming in from 365 degrees. Imagine, even though your focus is on your lower abdomen, imagine chi running through the center of your body, up to the top of your head, back down in front of your spine down to the base of your torso, up to the center of your body, and then back down, okay? But keep your focus in your lower abdomen. <clears throat> I will turn on uh, a treasure and give you a blessing. So I ask these treasures that I've turned on to, to subdivide their souls, go to each and everybody that is watching now and in the future, everybody that is listening on podcasts now and in the future, offer a blessing as appropriate for each of these souls. As I chant the mantra, hey, hung, hung, ar, shi, wong, yo, clear as appropriate the blockages along their seven soul houses and wai jiao. Bless each of them as appropriate to clear the blockages with the greatest love. 
Okay. Prepare to receive. Blessing begin. Hey, hung, hung, er, she, ye, wong, you. Hey, hung, hung, er, she, ye, wong, you. Each sound is touching on a different chakra and then clearing the space in the back. Hey, hung, hung, er, she, ye, wong, you. 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 Hey is the first soul house. Wong is the top soul house, the crown chakra. Yo is the space from the top to the bottom. Hey, hung, hung, er, she, ye, wong, you. Hey, hung, hung, er, she, ye, wong, you. <coughs> hey, hung, hung, er, she, ye, wong, you. 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 Hey, hung, hung, er, she, ye, wong, Let us bow our head nine times in gratitude to all the beings of light, all layers of the divine Tao source, our beloved creator, to Master Shah, Master Shah's original soul, to all the beings of light, including the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamus, sifus, saints, kahunas, all the Buddhas, bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, all of the beings of light, including our heavens team, let us bow our heads in gratitude for this wisdom, for these blessings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Countless bow downs, countless bow downs, countless bow downs. <clears throat> so, several souls showed up at the end of this. I tell you, you missed a good one. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. You can go back to my page in about a few minutes after I end this and you can watch from the beginning. Highly recommend it. This is part one. Uh, I didn't know how long it would take. Obviously, longer than this. So, I've given you explanations of the significance and power of each of the seven soul houses. I hope you have received value from this wisdom. Come Monday, when I return on my live stream, we will focus on empowering each of the seven soul houses and this mantra. Okay? 
learn more at Dao Song Dao Dance, the book and the audio book. You can uh, learn deeper wisdoms and practice. I will be teaching an extended course, 12 weeks. Uh, it'll start in about two months from now, okay? So in about eight weeks, I will start another course for the uh, opening your spiritual channels, which will include an in-depth practices for each of these seven soul houses and the major spiritual centers, third eye, kundalini, uh, all of the other major spiritual centers, okay? I'm in the middle of one right now, I'm week seven right now, so I have to finish these next five weeks and then prepare for the next one. So if you wish to join that, it's gonna be about $360 for those 12 weeks, roughly $30 a week. Start saving your money now, okay? Uh, uh, it's, I tell you, it's very, very powerful. We get nothing but, but positive responses from those who have attended the course. And a lot of them have opened their third eye uh, and it wasn't open before. Some have opened it quite a bit more. Um, the other spiritual channels and, and all of them have experienced health benefits, okay? So one last side note for those that are interested. <clears throat> there is a transmission that can be offered for each of these chakras. It literally can clear the karma blockages that would take you roughly 100 lifetimes to clear on your own. It comes with a light wall protection. It comes with a karma-free, two-inch sized golden light ball that replaces, uh, literally comes over. It's kind of like uninstalling Windows XP and putting in Windows 10, right? It's like removing the very old debris and putting in a brand new one. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you're just gonna have to trust uh, i can explain it but it's basically a trust basis for those of you that do know do not hesitate if you can get any of your chakras purified and cleansed especially your heart chakra or third eye or any of the other ones do it it's an absolute no-brainer it does cost some money not too bad um, you can connect with me afterwards and uh, i can give you more details find me through facebook uh, messenger my website, Kristen will post my website, it's asoulhealer.com or asoulhealer at yahoo.com. And then um, I will be able to serve you that way. I have done 95% of the services that I offer are over the phone uh, and very, very high level of efficacy, okay? And I'm happy to offer different proofs if that's what you're looking for. So I look forward to serving you in the future. I will see you Monday, uh, same time, same place, and I will go into part two of this teaching. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you to all the beings of light, divine down source, and everyone that has come. Please respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. Talk to you later.